Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I want to show you how to set up this custom control panel that allows you to control the various different parameters of your composition from within a single node. And this is a very useful workflow hack that's definitely going to make your life easier. So let's take a look at how it's done. So here we are in the Fusion page of Resolve, and I'm going to set up a very simple scene. I'm going to first of all create a background. I'm going to copy that background, paste, I'm going to rename it as square. Let's make it a little bit green. Let's have a look at it. That's the square. Let's come to image. We need to turn off auto resolution, set the width and height to 200, and then I can merge it over my background. So I'm going to take the square, copy and paste, rename it as circle. Let's merge that over the other merge like this, and let's change its color. So then let's select the circle, select the ellipse mask tool and set the width and height of the ellipse mask to one. OK, so let's just move these over. Let's move the square over to 0.3 and the merge for the circle 0.6. OK, so now we're ready to test out our advanced workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new dent node like so. And the reason I'm using a dent node is because it comes with very few built in controls. It's just tidier to use. And I'm going to rename this as CTL, short for control. You can rename it anything you want, but a nice short name is a pretty good idea. So then we're going to come to the control and we're going to right click edit controls. And we're going to type a name for our new slider. And I'm going to type COS and I'm going to make it a slider control. So COS with a capital C is pretty important. OK, so then if we come to our user tab, you can see we've now got a new slider. So let's make another new slider, edit controls. Let's call this one SIN, S-I-N. Again, important to make that capital, make that a slider control. OK, so then I'm just going to add expressions to both of these. So for the cos, I'm going to type cos open brackets time divided by 24, close brackets. I'm going to copy that, add an expression to the sign, paste in my copied expression and change the cos to sin. So now you can see those two values changing like that. And we can link the positions of our square and our circle to those values. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this with a transform in both cases. So add a transform to the square, add a transform to the circle. So let's come over to our square transform, center, right click, add expression. So this is an array that sets the X, Y positions and we want to target the Y. So in there, I'm going to type CTL dot cos capital COS. And you can see now that if we run that, that is actually linked to that expression. Let's do the same thing with the circle. Let's add an expression to the center. And this time for the Y value, let's type CTL dot S I N capital S. And so now the circle is being driven by that sign expression on our controller. But we can do a lot more with this now. So we can add another control. Let's edit controls and let's call this speed. Okay, let's make it a slider. Let's add one more control, edit controls, dist for distance, and make it a slider. So instead of using 24 for the speed, we can use the speed variable. So instead of 24, I'm going to pick whip the speed variable and or I could type it in. Let's type it in for the other one that, like that. So the speed is currently set to zero, so we're getting no movement. But if we set the speed to, say, six, it's going to go quite a lot faster than it was going at 24. Bearing in mind, this divider relates to frames. So if we wanted to slow it down, we could go 36. We get it really nice and slow. Let's stick with maybe 12. And then we can use our distance control to set the amplitude. So if we do times and then pick whip the distance, do the same thing here, times pick whip the distance. Currently, obviously, the distance is set to zero, so we're getting no movement. But if we set the distance to two, you can see we've got a greater range of movement. Or if we set it to 0.25, we've got a much narrower range of movement. 
and we can change the speed if we want to get them to move quicker. So now you see we've got a control panel from which we can control both of those animations. And what we could actually do with the square is we could, instead of that 0.5 for the X value, we could type ctl.sign. And now the square is actually going round in a circle like this. So let's just increase the distance to 0.75 so we can see that more clearly. Square is going round and round in a circle while the circle is bobbing up and down. So you can see how powerful this is. I mean, this is just a very basic example, but um, using a control node is a great way of controlling multiple parameters at the same time from the one place. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.